we wanted to make a video that helped to demystify some of the rules around the awards and what you can do and what you can't do. Now, some of these rules will relate to straight out of camera work and some of the rules will relate to compositing. I'm going to touch more on the compositing side of things because that is where a lot of the confusion lies and we'll try and work through visually what you need to consider to make sure that you fit within the rules when you're doing your editing. First of all, let's talk about stock photography and um, the difference with using your own stock library and using stock from the internet. Now, I use Lightroom CC to capture, um, to put all of my images in that I've photographed over the years and I keep them all in my own stock library. Now it is perfectly okay, of course, for me to use my own photographs. So when I'm talking about stock that is my own stock, that is absolutely fine. Now you absolutely cannot use anyone else's photographs, even if you've purchased the stock from a place like Adobe Stock. So you need to make sure that every pixel that you're putting into your image is your own photography. So that's the key. The next question is around, can you use a brush in solid mode or how can you use brushes? And for this one, we're just talking about the regular brushes that come with Photoshop. Let's head over to Photoshop and take a look. So I bought up this image uh, that I photographed and I've just created a new blank layer. Now if I was to choose a colour from the ear for example and I wanted to add something to that ear, you can see here I'm actually painting with pixels as a solid. None of this is photographic so you cannot do that but there are other blending modes that you may use to change something in the image and you're actually working with the, the pixels that are below. So the photographic pixels that are below. So soft light, that brings out the pixels below and really with that, you're just making something darker. So that is allowed. Overlay mode, vivid light, difference, all of these blending modes will do that. Adjustment layers uh, can be used in Photoshop in a number of ways. You can add adjustment layers to smart objects, uh, you can add adjustment layers and clip them to layers below. Now adjustment layers are really that. They actually adjust the image below that, you are, um, that you've added. So let's just have a look at that in Photoshop and how that works. So to show you how an adjustment layer works, I'll simply add one down here. I'll add a levels adjustment layer and this is applying to the whole image at the moment. So I can adjust using that levels adjustment and what that is doing, it is applying to that image below. So the pixels that I've photographed. So that is absolutely fine. Um, you could also clip it to elements in your image as well. So now I've got a cutout of the meerkat here and this levels adjustment layer can then be clipped just to that layer, if I put that below, you can see that the adjustment is simply to the layer below. And you can do things like changing colors, manipulating colors, anything like that, adjustment layers, do a whole host of things. If you look at the adjustment layers section, you can add levels, curves, vibrance, hue, saturation, etc. Now, some of the ones that you will need to remember are the same as the thing that we talked about before. It's the solid, gradient and pattern section at the top. So if I add a solid color above, that is pixels that I have not actually photographed. So I can't do that. I can't add a solid color layer, but I could change that to color and that is showing through the pixels below. So that is appropriate. If it is just creating pixels and you can't see the image below, then that is a problem. You might also bring that opacity right down and it's actually applying a haze to the image below. It's seeing those pixels below. So that is okay in this case. If you have any questions about that, please let us know. It's all about the intent of the artist. You know, if you want to bring that up to something like 95%, really the intent there is to do something that is outside of the rules. Um, and in that case, we would suggest if you wanted to do something like that, go and photograph 
a brown wall or even photograph a blue wall, bring it in and then change the colour of that blue wall. It's essentially the same thing, but it's doing it within the spirit of the rules. Some of you may have created brushes from photos that you have taken. I know I have done that with many as well. So keep in mind, if you have and you're utilising them in your work, you do want to make sure that you have reference and access to that original photo so that you can pr prove and verify that it is from your photo, it is from your pixels that you've photographed. Keep in mind the rules of the ASO Photographic Artist Award, age and date doesn't matter on those elements. With those other entries that you might enter into the Epson Print Awards or the Nikon Digital Awards, you need to make sure of that age of that element that you're using. So let's demonstrate. If I go over to my brushes, I can go into Spindly Tree. You can see the outline of my brush here. Now, again, in the spirit of the awards, what we would suggest with this is if you are stamping with a colour, then essentially you are adding pixels, even though it's in the shape of the tree that you initially photographed. So a better way to achieve exactly the same result is to go into Levels and create a Levels Adjustment layer. Pull that down, you might still see a little bit through and invert it, command I, and stamp with white. Now that levels adjustment layer can then be edited and you are essentially manipulating the pixels below. This is the same process with shadows that I'm going to take you through a little bit later. Now there can be some confusion when it comes to using brushes to mask, to smudge, to really manipulate the pixels within your image. Let's go ahead into Photoshop and have a look at how that might work. I have a brush that I have created. It's not from photos, it's actually from circles. And I've created this with the intent that it is used to smudge. So what I have done here is I've created a new blank layer. I've selected sample all layers and I do recommend to anyone that is working on images, this is a non-destructive way of editing because it does not uh, affect the actual original layer. Now if I use this smudge brush, what it's doing is it's actually moving those original pixels around. I might turn up the strength just so that you can see a little bit more. So that is smudging pixels that you have photographed. Um, so using a brush, any type of brush, to do any sort of work like smudging, like blur, dodging and burning, uh, and even masking is appropriate. If I create a mask on this, and I choose another brush to mask with, and it can be any sort of brush. Here's a tree group. Uh, again, it's one I've photographed, but let's pretend it's one that I've purchased off the internet. Um, I can use this to mask with, and I am just hiding those pixels. So it doesn't matter in any way, shape or form what brush I use to do this. Now this can be a really good way of using a stamp brush as well. To stamp, so to use the pattern or the clone tool and to choose a brush shape, so the tree. Now maybe I'll take some of the meerkat here and place it here. Okay, so that is one great way of reusing your pixels uh, with different shaped brushes. So the next thing is, can you create shadows using a brush with solid black. Let's go into Photoshop. Now, a lot of people do this and we are very aware of that. If I create a new blank layer, that's black. And essentially I'm painting with black. If I was trying to add some shadow there, you know, I might even turn the flow down. People often use black to burn in. Now, that is similar to the traditional method of burning in, in analog terms. It is allowed, but there is a better way to do this. And I just want to highlight that for you. It's definitely the preferred way is a levels adjustment layer or a curves adjustment layer, because again, then you're affecting the layer that pixels below, you're actually not adding pixels. You're not adding black. So if we create a new levels adjustment layer, pull it down, invert the mask, and then we can paint in the shadow 
wherever we want to. Obviously, that, that looks terrible. It's not meant to be there. But just to give you an idea. Now then, you can actually adjust that as you need to. Make it darker or lighter. In this case, it might need to have a, a touch more red to it. And you can even change the blending mode as well. Multiply is often a good one. So we recommend using a levels adjustment layer or a curves adjustment layer or multiply or blending modes rather than just the solid. But it is OK if you have done it that way, it will be accepted. There's always been a lot of questions about textures. You can buy textures from the internet. You can download textures from the internet. And you can use them in your work. And essentially, if you're doing that for commercial purposes, there's absolutely no problem, as long as you have the license for it. But in the case of the awards, it's very important that you have the original texture and that it is your photograph. It's actually really easy to capture textures. Um, you can just go out for a walk and get what you need. You can create, and I've painted onto canvas to create textures. There's so many different ways. Let's just jump over to Photoshop. I actually keep a lot of textures in my libraries. And uh, if you've got certain things that you're going back to a lot of the time, you can pull them in. Now, keep in mind, you can't keep the original RAWs in here. So it is uh, a good idea to have them as a reference. Again, the original photo. But a painterly texture like this that I have photographed, and I painted in this case, but of course you could photograph anything, can be used as a texture because it was my photograph originally. And then you can use different blending modes to create overlays. What you can't do is get something similar from the internet and use that as a texture. So if you have any textures in your work that you know are not yours, I would highly recommend before you hit submit, go and replace those with your own textures. Crumple up some paper. Um, there are so many options of textures and it does not take much. You know, here's some water. Go out and photograph it. Use your phone if you need to doesn't really matter as long as the photo was yours. Let's talk about using brushes uh, to add light. In the, in the darkroom, in the past, you've been able to use stencils to burn in or to lighten. So we're gonna show you that this method is okay, it's acceptable, but I'm also gonna talk through the preferences and the recommendations that we would have moving forward as you're creating, just to consider. I am going to bring up, I'll create a new layer. And I've got a bunch of lights that I've photographed and created brushes from. Uh, let's just have a look at this. So perhaps the light flare could be a good one to demonstrate this with. Now, if I just stamp with that light flare, that looks okay. It is, I'm in this case, stamping a solid color on though. So like we said before, you shouldn't be using a brush to stamp something solid that's not originally your photograph. So preference and the way that you would use it is to use a blending mode, which is essentially what you would do in the darkroom uh, by burning in or using stencils to make things darker or to use a stencil so that it doesn't show up on the paper. Uh, and something like hard light will look similar, but then you can adjust it as you need to. So the key is thinking about how would it work in the darkroom? Could I do this in the darkroom? And is it in the spirit of the awards? Now this may have created more questions for you than when we started, but we do hope that it really gives you an insight into what we're looking for, it's all about the heart of it. It's, it's about that integrity of choice that you make when you're creating. If there is something that you've done that you're really not sure of if it fits, please do reach out to us. We will work with you and we'll give you suggestions. Uh, we want to make sure that you feel confident and comfortable that your work is not going to be disqualified should we need to check on it. Now, it's important to note that these rules are specific to the APP awards, but there may also be a lot of crossover with many of the other awards that you might enter. It's very, very important to check the rules and to check with the organisers of those particular awards to make sure you're doing the right thing.
But what we hope is that this visual explanation will help you in understanding if you need to make any changes or if what you're doing is the correct process. If you're new to entering, please don't stress out. We know how hard it is. These are some of these Photoshop techniques are a little more advanced. We're not here to judge your capabilities of Photoshop or your understanding. As we said, with the shadows, for example, if you've been using a solid black brush to paint in shadows and that's something that you've created in the past, then it's acceptable. But moving forwards, if you think about the process and just that concept of all the pixels being photographic, you can work in different methods to actually make that work for you and for any awards that you enter. So we hope this has been helpful and please reach out to us with any questions that you might have.